Hello friends, I'm Dr. Vineet Agarwal and as many of you may be aware, I have written three books on mythology, starting with the first one on Brahmarishi Vishwamitra. A lot of people have asked me why I chose an obscure character like Vishwamitra instead of writing on Krishna or Shiva or even Ram as many of the modern writers are doing. In this video, I'll tell you five interesting facts about Brahmarishi Vishwamitra that will help you understand why I chose him as the subject of my first book. The very first interesting fact about Vishwamitra is that he is the only one of the seven Saptarishis who was not born a Rishi. Vishwamitra was a Kshatriya warrior who ruled from the city of Kanyakobj, which is today known as Kannauj and lies in Uttar Pradesh. He was a warrior waging wars, expanding the boundaries of his kingdom and living a life of luxury like most of the royalty does. So what changed? In a chance encounter with Brahmarishi Vashisht, he realized that there was more to life than what he had and he started his journey of self-discovery which led him to becoming a Brahmarishi and joining the holy pantheon of the Saptarishis. The second interesting fact about Vishwamitra is that he is associated with three major incarnations of Lord Vishnu. A lot of you may be aware of the role Vishwamitra plays in the Ramayana when he comes to take Ram and Lakshman to the forest to get rid of the demons. But that is not all. He passes on the knowledge of the divine weapons or the Divya Astras to Ram and Lakshman which they use later in destroying the demon forces throughout the Dandak Aranya. He is also the one who takes Ram to Mithila where Sita's Swamvar is happening. Imagine if that had not happened the entire Ramayana would not have taken place. But not just Sri Ram, he is also associated with Parshuram, the sixth incarnation of Lord Vishnu, whom we also encounter in Sita Swamvar. Parshuram and Vishwamitra were actually born of the same boon and are related by blood ties. Parshuram, in fact, is the grand nephew of Vishwamitra, being the son of Yamdagni. Besides these two, Vishwamitra also appears in the Mahabharat. In a famous episode towards the end of the Mahabharat, when Krishna's son Sam and his cousins are playing a prank on the rishis that are assembled in the city of Dwarka, one of them is Vishwamitra. The rishis Vishwamitra and Narad, in fact, curse the princes that their prank would result in the demise of Dwarka. The third fact that many of you again may be aware of is the dalliance of Vishwamitra with the famous Apsara of Swarg, Menka. But did you know they stayed together for 10 long years? It was not just a one night stand. And their dalliance actually resulted in the birth of Shakuntala, who was made famous by Kalidas in his immortal play. Shakuntala's son Bharat is the man after whom India has got the title of Bharat in the seventh Manvantar. The fourth interesting fact about Vishwamitra actually takes us into the realm of science fiction. Did you know he is credited with the creation of an entire constellation which is known as the Crux and is visible even today in the southern hemisphere? Why did he do it? Well, it was his rivalry with Vashisht as well as Indra that spurned him into action to help a king known as Satyavrat who later became famous as Trishanku. And here comes the final point. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yonaha Prachodayat You may be aware of this mantra know, and know it as the Gayatri Mantra but did you know who discovered it? It was Brahmarishi Vishwamitra who for the first time accessed this mantra, visualized it and made it available to mere mortals. The mantra is placed in the third mandal of the Rig Veda and is widely recognized as the primal Bij mantra in Hinduism. If you like the video, do subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends who would be interested in knowing about this great personality of ancient India. Thank you.